floss tube friends welcome today is saturday november 28th we are at the end of the month i don't know where november went super fast um this is floss tube number 16 i am pamela um but you can call me pam because nobody calls me pamela except my husband and and that's when he uses my middle name too um anyway this is floss tube number 16 and it's a channel about cross stitch mostly and maybe even a little bit of knitting because I started a little bit of knitting um, and we'll talk about that later. I'll show that. Um, if you are a returning viewer, thanks for coming back. I appreciate it. And if you're brand new, this is your first floss tube of mine. Welcome. Um, hit the subscribe button below and that way you will know every time I make a video and I'm going to be making quite a few videos starting next month. So, and we'll talk about that later too when we get to plans, but I have notes and a pen and I'm going to fiddle with it the entire time. I need to put this pen far away from me. Okay. Um, what has been going on in my life since the last time I talked with you guys, which was <sighs> Halloween. Is that right? That can't, no, 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 that's not right. I talked to you in the middle of the month. Um, somewhere in the middle of November, we chatted. Uh, let's see, we had Thanksgiving just recently. Um, for those of you in the States, I'm in the States, uh, Rhode Island specifically, and we just had Thanksgiving. Um, it was small. We, my in-laws live, I don't know, like six houses away from us. And so we, we got together with my mother and father-in-law and <clears throat> it was a lovely dinner. And I appreciated the fact that I didn't have to make a turkey. And we, um, had, certain rules that the six of us had to follow for the two weeks before Thanksgiving for for us to be willing to eat a meal together um, without masks on. So that all went well. Um, it was a little a little sad for me. Only I, I come from a very large family. I am one of five girls and um, and we all have kids and spouses and Normally there's 20 plus people at the Thanksgiving that I usually do, but it was nice. It, it was different, but I'm looking forward to next year where hopefully we will have a regular Thanksgiving. Um, and then also there was my birthday. I'm officially 44. I don't mind sharing my age. Um, we all get older and I had a really great birthday. Um, I don't even know why I didn't do any, I didn't go on a date night with the husband or nothing special. I mostly cross stitched all day. It was fantastic. Um, I apologize. You may hear my cats are in that like run up and down the hallway and chirp at each other sort of mood. So that's happening in the background. I don't know if you can hear it, but if you can hear it, that's what it is. Um, Speaking of which, I don't know if you guys watch Helen D, who is one of my favorite floss tubers, but in one of her last videos, her cat did that like chattering thing at the birds outside the window. If you have cats, you know what I'm talking about. The entire time, oh, there, there they go. They're chasing each other. Um, it was hysterical. It, <laughs> you need to go back and watch it. I'll link her floss tube below. It really, it was one of the best. It was one of the best videos I've ever watched. I loved it. Um, what was I talking about? My birthday. It was a great birthday. Um, my mom got me a cutting mat and a ruler and a rotary cutter. I didn't have any of those things. And every time I needed to use them, I had to go to her house. Um, I still need to go to her house to use her sewing machine because I don't own one of those. But it's nice to have my own cutting tools here for when I do... Um, some FFOing, which if you are new to floss tube land, stands for a fully finished object, which is when you take your finished cross stitch piece and you turn it into something like um, when you stick it on a pumpkin or in a frame or you turn it into a pillow. Um, yeah, so so I've had it, it's been a nice two weeks. It was a nice Thanksgiving. It was a nice birthday. Um, one of my favorite things about my birthday was everyone participating in my birthday cell. That was a lot of fun. Um, it was more fun even than I thought it was going to be. It made my day feel special. And so I wanted to thank everybody who participated in my birthday cell on Instagram. Um, I am still stitching and we'll get to that when I show my whips, but I'm still stitching on my birthday start. Um, 
So if you still want to join in for the rest of the month, I know we're, we've only got a handful of days left. You can use hashtag Turkey baby birthday Sal. Um, and you can head over to my Instagram and get, uh, details on it. And my Instagram is going to be in the description box below. Um, what else? Oh, and also speaking of my birthday, Sal, Christy from Christy's corner. Um, if you're not watching Christy on Christy's corner, you should be. She's, I love her. She's one of my favorite floss tubers. I, floss tube is just too narrow a term for her though. She does, um, embroidery. She doesn't cross stitch, uh, but she does embroidery. She just started black work. Um, she does historical baking videos. She, she, she's just multifaceted. She does amazing, amazing stuff. Anyway, the point being, she did a black work turkey um, for, and she designed it herself. It's amazing. Um, I'm gonna link her floss to you below, and I'm also gonna link her Instagram because you need to go to her Instagram and look at the pictures of this turkey. I wish I had that sort of talent. I don't. I do, I I have to follow a pattern and. Um, Somebody needs to, I have no creative genes in my body at all. Anyway, Christy, I loved that turkey. So yeah, that made me happy. Um, what else? Sorry, I'm feeling a little low key today. I think I need my caffeine. I got a Dunkin' Peppermint Mocha this morning. I had to get up before dawn to get my son to work. So coffee was needed. Okay. Why are we here? Stitching. What have I been stitching since you have seen me last? Um, I had finished two pieces the last time we chatted. I finished the Mayflower and I showed it in my last video. I just wanted to let you guys know it is off to the framer. Um, so that should be coming back, I think, this week. And I can't, I can't wait. I can't wait to show you guys. Um, and then I said that my plan was to finish to get out and hopefully finish my oldest whip, which my husband and I were trying to figure out when I started this. It is, but it's Mirabilia's July Amethyst Fairy. And the copyright on this, why do I never have my reading glasses? I have no idea what the copyright is. I'd have to take the chart out. It's, I wanna say it's like 2005. Oh, and the sticker on it is from August of 2005, the pricing label. Um, my husband and I think I had to have started it somewhere between 2006 and 2010. I really think it was somewhere in the 2007, 2008 area. Um, and I had never stitched on anything like this. I was brand new to stitching on linen when I started this. Um, it's not my best stitching, but it's good enough. And this is the land of good enough. So that's okay. Um, and it mostly has been a UFO, which is an unfinished object. Um, in my, in my whip pile, it, it wasn't even a whip. I wasn't working on it for years and years and years. Um, and all that I had left to do was the beating. And I did, oh my gosh, guys, folks. It is, it's a little wrinkly. I'm not a good ironer, but she is, oh my gosh. I'm so pleased. I'm so, I wanna start, I need to start another one. I had so much fun with the beading. I love it. I love all the little beads in her flower bouquet. And her, my favorite, my favorite part though, is her like off the shoulder. Oh, I love it. So I didn't have, it needed a Mill Hill treasure here and I didn't have it and I couldn't find it. So I had this um, button jar from my mom with all, like, you know, when you buy sweaters or jackets or blouses and they have the little button packs on them. She had a bunch of little of those packets and she must have had something that had beads on it. Um, like gemstones, like maybe, you know, like you get those sweaters and they've got bling. And I just took this out of one of the little packs and sewed it on and I think it works. So she's done. 
Um, she is stitched on a 32 count linen. It's a Swigart. It's got, you know, the orange thread through the, I don't know what this is called. Somebody who's smarter than me about fabric will know what this end is called. And then when I see it in the comments, I'll be like, oh yeah, that's what it's called. But I can't think of it right now. The call for fabric, it says it should be 32 count cream linen by Swigart. Now, also the alternate fabric would be white linen by which help? Watch help? I never know how to say that. Here's the thing. Back then in 2007, let's say, I had no idea that you could pick different fabrics than the called for. So I'm guessing I went into my um, local needle workshop, which at the time was with Heart and Soul in Cumberland, which no longer exists. Well, it does. I say this all the time. It does exist, I think, still, but it's a gift shop and not a craft, not a cross stitching store. Um, and the woman who owned it, Monica, I would just go in and say, I want to stitch this and I need the fabric. And she would give me the fabric that she thought matched it. So I'm thinking it might be cream linen by Swigart, or if it's not, it's something similar. I don't know. <laughs> I just, I always did everything called for back then. Um, and I still mostly do because I'm not good with color and it gives me anxiety to have to pick things in. If I can get the called for stuff, I will stitch it on the called for. It's only when I can't get it that it becomes a problem. Um, okay, next up. So I finished that and I finished this. I was going to shout them out later, but I'll shout them out now. Um, I just discovered that two women who I stitched with in person at my new local needle workshop um, that I discovered about a year ago. She's been open for a million years, but I discovered her about a year ago. Um, the World in Stitches in Littleton, Massachusetts um, is my local needle workshop. And she does a, Randy is the owner, she does a stitchy group every second and last Saturday of the month, which I loved stitching at, but I have not since the summer when um, travel restrictions went into place between our states. Um, wow, I'm really ummy today. So what was I talking about? I've lost it. Oh, <laughs> okay, we're back. Um, two of the ladies who I have stitched with there, and now I can't think of their names, Chris, and something that begins with a J. Jane, Jean, I think it's Jane. Um, started a floss tube. They've got maybe 10 or 12 or eight. I don't know. They've been doing it a few months. Anyway, they're boss stitchers and they're um, in the, from the Boston area. And um, so I just recently started watching them and they did a Zoom meetup. I'm really bad at storytelling today. They did a Zoom meetup, which was a lot of fun. So I was stitching the mirabilia during that and then I finished it and I, it was so nice to finish something I had been working on for a thousand years. That might be a little bit of an exaggeration, but kind of close. Um, it was so nice to finish it like with other stitchers so they could enjoy that with me because other, I would have just done a little happy dance in my living room by myself otherwise. So that was nice. And then that got finished. So I brought out, I'm trying to do a rotation of my whip. So finished my oldest whip, got out my second oldest whip. So by the way, officially having finished the Mirabilia, all of my whips are from 2020. I have nothing older than 2020. That's fair. I mean, that's, I, that's actually nothing really to brag about. I don't have more than 12 whips because I keep myself under control. I'm not saying that anybody who has more than 12 whips is out of control, but for me, that would feel out of control. So, um, but previous, like pre floss tube, before I discovered floss tube, I never had more than like three whips. I was mostly a monogamous stitcher. The only time I like, I would get to something that I UFO'd and I'd start something else. I didn't have like multiple things I was actively working on. That Now that's not the case, but, so it's not surprising that all my whips are from 2020 because when you don't have a lot, it's easy to finish, right? Okay, what did, what did, what did I work on? 
A Year at Hawthorne Hollow. This is by Carriage House Samplings. And this was my new year new start for 2020. And my plan when I started it was to do a block every month. And that has not been what happened. But that's okay because it's getting it's getting steady work every now and then. It is being stitched on. 40 count picture this plus legacy. And uh where was I? What did I stitch on? Down at the bottom. I did the outline for December. So I outlined December's box because I wanted to hop over to November's and I felt like I needed to hop from somewhere. You know, like I either would have had to finish July's box. Nope, this is May. I would have had to do May and then I would have had to do September whatever, I don't know what this month is, August. And then, that makes sense, to get down to November. Or I could have outlined December's box and then jump over to November. So anyway, I jumped over to November. I got the box outlined um, or semi-outlined because I do that thing where you count, you do half stitches to get over to the 10th stitch and then do a full cross. Um, I apologize if that's not focusing really well, probably because I keep sticking my face in it. Um, anyway, when I finish the block, I'll go back around and cross over all the other, all the other X's. So I stitched down at the bottom and I, I love these leaves. I love these leaves. So, and then I started the grass up the side I was hoping to get to the turkeys. There are some really cute turkeys on there, but I did not get to them. That's okay. Next time it comes around, I may or may not stitch on November. I try to stitch on the month that I'm in when it comes into the rotation. Um, and I haven't had a scenario yet in which it comes into the rotation and I've already finished that month because I only have two months finished. So, <laughs> but if it came into the, if it came into rotation in a month that I had done, like say February, and um, I would just stitch on the next block that wasn't done. And someday the whole thing will be finished and that will be exciting. Um, okay. And then, and then it was time for my birthday start. So my birthday start was The Tree of Magic by Barbara Anna. And it was a kit that you could get from, am I showing this the right way? Nitka Moscow. Um, and here in the States, they're a Russian company. Here in the States to get them, you, I don't know if they have a website. What I did was I reached out to them through direct message on Instagram and said, hey, I'd really like to purchase this kit. Um, here's my PayPal email. And then they, they sent me an invoice and then, um, then I couldn't actually pay the, <laughs> I couldn't pay the invoice cause I had a business PayPal. Um, and so I had to get a friend to pay for it for me. But normally if you don't have a business PayPal, you can totally pay an invoice from Russia. But I'm assuming because of sanctions or whatnot or regulations, I couldn't, um, I couldn't use my business PayPal to pay for it. So that's just a forewarning if you are if you have a business PayPal and you wanna buy um, a kit from Nitka Moscow, which you may want to because they just came out with a Christmas version or a holiday or a winter, I don't know. It looks like it's got little Santas on it. A holiday-ish version of this kit, of this pattern, and it's super cute. Um, I almost, went and got it immediately, but I'm trying to have a little self-control. And it does, it's not as wowy, wowy is not a real word, but um, it's not as exciting to me as this one is because I think it's the color palette for this one. So this is, this is the floss. And when I took it out, I haven't even shown you what I've done yet, but that's okay. When I took it out on my birthday and I'm, I'm looking at the floss and I'm sitting in my stitchy spot in my living room, and I'm looking across my living room at my curtains and 
I'm like, I, I now know why I needed to stitch this. So like, this is literally the color palette of my living room. I have the green on my walls. I have every single one of these colors is in my curtains. My rug has all these colors. My couch is this color. And then I've got my stitchy chair is this color. And then I have another stitchy ch chair that's this color. This is my living room. So, so yeah, that was, <laughs> I don't know why that didn't occur to me before, but I must really like these colors. Anyway, this is what I got done. So this is, I, I was a little nervous about the amount of fabric that's here. I'm still a little nervous. I'm nervous about the width. I can't read Russian. I don't know what, where did I, what did I do with my, the card, oh, it's up here. I don't know how to read this alphabet. <laughs> I forget what it's called, but I can't, obviously I can't read Russian. So I assume that the things in the kit are listed somewhere on the stuff you get, but um, I don't know. I don't know what fabric this is. I got out my ruler and I counted. I'm 99% sure it's a 32 count. It's a Swigart, but I don't know the color. Um, and I, I think it's gonna fit fine, but I was just, I mean, I can't imagine it's not. Who would sell a kit? and not have the right amount of fabric in it. But I centered and I measured it and the length is fine. I'm just a little nervous that the width is gonna be tight. So I center started it. I prefer because I stitch in hand to start in the on the top because when I stitch, I hold it against me for tension. And so if I stitch the bottom first, that those stitches are then rubbing against me and I don't want them to get fuzzed up. So I like to start at the top, but I center started this and then stitched. It looked like a little Eiffel Tower. I stitched it up to the top and then I, I'm working my way down. And I don't normally do back stitching until the end, but I couldn't, I couldn't resist. I think I'm gonna back stitch as I go because it just really, I love it. I look like, you guys ever watch Home Improvement back in the 90s? I look like, what was his name, Wilson, over the fence. You could just see the top of him. Anyway, this is how far I got. So I plan on stitching, this mushroom, seriously, I love this mushroom. So I'm going to stitch on this through tomorrow evening. I can't, and by the way, it is seriously the funnest thing I've ever stitched. I'm not sure if funnest is a word. The most fun thing, that doesn't work either. It's seriously fun. I, I'm really, really enjoying this. All right, let me put that away. I have got a jumble of stuff going on on my table today. Okay. And then I did one more thing. I am teaching myself how to knit using Caroline from Off the Grid um, her, she's got a playlist of tutorials in which she was teaching Ginger Gerald how to knit. Um, and you can find, you can find those on the playlist of her floss tube channel. And I will have that linked below in the description box. And the, you start with a dishcloth and the dishcloth is called the super simple diamond dishcloth. And it's by Louise Patterson. And I finished one. So I am using um, Knit Picks. I, I discovered that there's a company called Knit Picks and they sell um, a yarn called Dishy and it's 100% cotton and it's perfect for making dish towels, dish cloths. I'm gonna use it as a face cloth. I don't really use dish cloths to wash my dishes. Anyway, you guys don't need to know my domestic habits. Anyway, I finished it. So I still have these things are still dangling here because apparently you need a darning needle to weave them in. And um, I don't have one, but I have since um, done a little bit more purchasing for my new knitting hobby. Um, and so I did purchase some darning needles. Now, 
it's not square. <laughs> it's a little wonky and that's okay. And I don't know, there's, there's some whole looking things. It's not perfect, but it's good enough. And I have to tell you, I am extremely pleased because knitting, guys, knitting is like magic. You're using these two sticks and, and yarn and that it turns into something. And I have no idea how it happens. I just follow what I'm told to do and, and then you get something. It's fascinating to me. So next step is to learn how to knit a hat. So I purchased the pattern, which is also um, by Louise Patterson. And I forgot what it's called. And there is sirens going by my house and I'm sorry for that. Um, and so I had to order um, double pointed needles and I had to get more yarn, of course. And then I ordered some darning needles. So those are all, I'm waiting for those to come in. But in the meantime, before I started the hat, I have done, I've cast on and started another dish towel. So, because this, the ball that I purchased should make two of them. So I figured while I'm waiting, I'll get more dish towel practice in. So yeah, I don't know if you should do this, but, and I'm sure you probably shouldn't and it's bad for your yarn, but I don't know how to store otherwise. So without it falling off the needles, that's what I do. Um, so yeah, I don't think knitting is going to take over my hobby time. Would I need just using it? I can't cross stitch and watch TV with my family. So I figured I would learn something I could do while we're watching TV with my, TV with my family. So knitting was it. Um, and then where am I at now? What am I at for time? This is, this might be a long one. Um, I'm only like halfway done. What have I been stitching? Haul. And then I did some purchasing. There's something about having a birthday month that makes you think I can buy all the things for myself because it's my birthday. Um, so I did that. I mean, it could be worse. It's just, it's it's a bigger pile than it was last time we were together, um, but it's not the most enormous pile I've seen on floss tube. So um, I was gonna talk about this in plans, but I'll talk about it now because I've got haul here for it. Stitching Book Club's next book is starting on December 5th, and it is A Christmas Carol. This is the cutest book. It's adorable. So I got this at Barnes & Noble. I didn't have the Christmas Carol. I do have a itchy nose though, sorry. Um, it was, I think you can only get this cover in the, this book like this at Barnes & Noble. It was $8. So it's so cute and it's not a hard cover. It's like this weird, um, it's flexible, feels kind of plasticky, but it's adorable. And it's got the little like gold edging. Cause my plan, I don't know if I've said this before and I apologize if this is a repeat conversation. I have a wall in my living room and my plan is to put up one shelf and on it will be the books from Stitching Book Club that I've read. And so I want them to be pretty. And then I'm going to put my framed pieces of the book, like of the projects for the books around the shelf. So it'll be like a planned display. Um, so I want the books to be cute. So anyway, I got this because this starts December 5th. It's not too late to join. Um, I will have her uh, Etsy. She did some, if you've, if, I feel like this is going to be a long winded side story. Anyway, if you have stitched with her before, she's, you'll know she's doing a new format this time. Um, and it didn't quite work out as she had planned, but you can purchase, if you use a browser on your internets on your computer or a laptop, you can purchase it through something called teachable or, um, you can get it in her Etsy shop. I did the teachable version. It should be the same. I I don't know why it would be different. Anyway, I will post, um, it's, I can't think of her name, but 
her company is called Sapphire Mountain Handcrafts. And I will post her Instagram, the Stitching Book Club Instagram below, because she's got a lot of info there about the different ways that you can get, um, get the pattern for this, get signed up for it. And I'll post her Etsy below too. I don't know how, I don't know if I'll post her Teachable. Anyway, there will be information for you. If you are interested and you are want to find out more, there will be a way that you can get that information in the description box below. Anyway, it starts December 5th. So I needed, I didn't have all of the DMC and I need to get fabric. So I got... Uh, 14 count white opalescent Ada. I like to do the stitching book clubs on Ada because it's a stitch along and I want to keep up with it and I can stitch faster on Ada. This is my first time doing an opalescent though. So this should be interesting. And then there were a bunch of greens and uh, I'm going to try to hold these up so you can see them. There, that works. So that those are all the floss. I still have to bobbinate the new ones. And then there's French knots. I hate French knots, like a lot. And I've said this before, I think it's because I stitch in hand and so my tension is not, I don't have good tension. It, my fabric is not taut. Um, and so for me to do a French knot usually involves like acrobatics with my legs and my fabric stretched across. Anyway, you guys don't need to know. Somebody, my husband should take a video sometime of me trying to do French knots. It's not pretty. I'm thinking beads are going to go in place of the French knots. So I, the French knots I think are this color. I think that's a good match. These are 00968. I'm hoping to put beads on in place of the French knots. I'm hoping it looks good. Um, so that starts, this goes back to plans, that starts December 5th. Um, so my plan is when it comes out on December 5th to stitch it until I finish that part and then we'll see what happens. It shouldn't take me very long. This is going to be a small stitch along. So if you've never done Stitching Book Club and you'd love to read The Christmas Carol with us, um, and you know what, it's, it's, the fabric only needs to be like an eight by eight piece of fabric. So it's small. She, she said it's only got three parts, I think. Um, and we should be finished before Christmas. So we're starting December 5th. We're finishing before Christmas. It's a little, little, little project. I, I'm excited, but I don't think it'll take very long in between releases to get the, each piece done, each part done. Um, if I'm not making sense today, I'm sorry. I feel like my thoughts are all over the place. Okay, then Michelle Bendy, um, Bendy Stitchy on YouTube. I'll have her floss tubes uh, linked below. She's a rep for Bags Plus, and I can't think of who is the Bags Plus. Corinna, Corinna, Kareen. It's something like that. It begins with a C. I know that for sure. <laughs> anyway, she's a rep for Bags. Uh, Betty said she's a rep for Bags Plus. Um, and Bags Plus is located in the UK. So it's you can always order from Bags Plus, Bags Plus's Etsy shop. But when Bendy Stitchy does a sale, the shipping is much more affordable because Bendy Stitchy is in Oregon, Washington, one of those Pacific Northwest states. And anyway, she had a live sale on her YouTube channel. And so I, I had to do a little purchasing. Um, so I ended up, I think these are called Bendy Flips or they're called Flips at any rate. I don't know if they're the bendy flip, it's a sizing thing. Anyway, I got the one, two, three, four, five, the 25 pocket ones. So on this side, isn't this fabric adorable? On this side, there's a pocket. And my plan is for my littler projects, I can fit the chart in there and the fabric. So it'll work like a project bag. And then on this side, oh, the, what is this? Oh, that's adorable. She stuck a little like thank you in there. And it's a little bobbin. How cute is that? 
a little like thank you for shopping super cute anyway you store your your floss and you don't have to do bobbinated dmc you can stick your fancy floss in like that too um so i got this one and then i purchased this one isn't that so pretty so my plan what i'm thinking is my new year new start is going to go in one of these i don't have that with me um but i showed that in the last video so and then i don't know what i'm doing with the other one but something will go in it so i did that and then um i got a couple charts i'm like what are we talking about we're still on haul um my my middle guy was like i don't know what to get you for your birthday i'm like well how much are you planning on spending and he's like, I don't know. I'm like, does $30 sound fair? He goes, yeah, that's probably what I'd spend. I'm like, how about we sit down at the computer together and you give me your debit card and I go and do a little cross-stitch shopping. And so we did that and it was fun. And then it came in yesterday. So um, this has been on my must-stitch list uh, since I, probably a year, um, when I saw it about a year ago. Um, somebody stitched it and finished it this year. I think it was Amy Gable stitcher. Um, hers came out fantastic and I need to stitch this. So this is, uh, I don't know what its official title is. 12 days of Christmas by Satsuma street. And oh my gosh, I'm going to stitch it. You can stitch them separately as ornaments. Who stitches them as ornaments? Long dog stitcher um stitch it I'll I'll have her floss tube link below too I am going to be linking I'm gonna have to go back and watch this and write down everybody I said I was going to link below if my notes if my show notes take a little bit of time to get um posted after the video it's because I had to go back and watch the whole video to remember everybody I said I was going to link below um you can stitch them separately as ornaments but I'm going to stitch it together as one piece when I'm starting this I have no idea probably in 2021. Well, I mean, that's pretty obvious since we're almost at the end of 2020, um, but I'm not starting it this year. And then I needed fabric for um, my daily temperature stitch along. Where is the, like, where's the picture of the pattern? My next year's, and I still haven't pitch, picked a hashtag. So for everyone who's waiting for me to pick a hashtag for our stitch along, um, hasn't happened yet, but obviously will before uh, January 1st. So um, this is Temperature Tree by Stitch and Mommy. And this is the temperature chart I'm stitching for next year. I've been working on collecting my floss um, and I needed fabric still because I wanna start on the tree next month. So it's ready for January. So I just got some 16 count white Ada, antique white Ada. Um, so thank you to my middle guy for the lovely birthday gift. And yeah, that was so nice of him. <laughs> it felt a little bit weird, but also if you're not, like it was kind of fun to sit down with him and he didn't care what I bought, but it was sort of like a joined experience together. Sort of like making him go into a cross-stitching shop with me, which would be like something he would never do. So anyway, and then I also, um, I don't remember, by the way, I don't remember any of the places I got this stuff. I did a little bit of one, two, three stitch because it's fast and it's easy. And sometimes for me, that's the best way to get my fabric. I don't have a sewing machine. And when you purchase from one, two, three stitch, it comes with the surged edges and that's, I mean, the Ada doesn't, but the linen does. And that's, that's important to me because especially during these COVID times, I have not been running over to my mom's house every other second to bother her for her sewing machine. <sighs> Maybe she'll get me one for Christmas. That would be nice. Anyway, so I, with some of this stuff, like I threw in charts and whatever, um, Anyway, this is one of the charts I threw in, I think when I got the fabric for my uh, Christmas Carol. Anyway, I, I, this might be a mania start for me this year. This is Arranging the KitchenAids by Ink Circles. I've never done an Ink Circle, so I'm really excited. I'm, I mean, it's not one of their typical, like, uh, 
mandala or ink circles does some amazing charts. I've never done one. Anyway, is the point. And I can't wait to stitch this. I'm very excited about this chart. Um, and I mean, my I'm in my dining room, but it's really a big eating kitchen. So I feel like these colors will go fantastic in my kitchen with, you know, that red wall. And then I got Quaker Pumpkins by Hello from Liz Matthews. I need to stitch this. And I haven't decided yet whether I'll stitch it with the All Hallows Eve because I love these pumpkins so much. I don't want them to come down after Halloween, but then it's not super obviously Halloween-y, so I could, because I also like that it says All Hallows Eve. But if it got, if it stayed on the wall through Thanksgiving, it's not like it's got ghosts and spooky trees or anything like that. I feel like it could totally stay. Or I could rechart it. Maybe it could say gathering or something. I don't know. That's a ways off too. I'm not, my new starts for this year are already planned out. Um, so that is not one of them. And then I also had to get the latest Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine. Um, I pretty much want to stitch everything in here. Um, especially, I, I know everybody has showed this. I need to stitch that. That's heart and hand. I forget what it's called. Um, I, I have to stitch that. And then since I was getting a Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine, I decided to go ahead and get the fall one. Um, I'd like to get myself a subscription, but I'm kind of waiting to see if anybody gets me one for Christmas. And if not, I'm going to get myself one. So that was it. That was haul. I felt like it was a lot of stuff. And I know it, it could have been more, but it felt like a lot. Okay, where are, I have notes. Where are we? We did, hi, welcome, uh, da, 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 haul. plans. We've already talked a little bit about some of the plans. Um, December 5th, I am starting Stitching Book Club, Christmas Carol. Um, I think starting on December 1st, I'm going to start the tree for uh, the temperature tree so that can be done. Um, I may, I forget who does it, is it, I don't know who does it, I, I can, her name is Long, and I can't remember what it is, anyway, somebody makes a Flossmas ornament, and Caroline from Off the Grid usually shows it. Um, it's usually a collaboration between Caroline from Off the Grid and this person who I can't think, four boys in a Newfoundland, it's something like that. I, oh my gosh, this is gonna make me crazy. Um, I assume that she's doing a 2021 ornament and if she does, I think I'm going to stitch that as well. And that was not part of my start plans, but I, I might, I might do that. I might hold off on picking up a whip from my rotation until January. And I might just do my Christmas club, Christmas Carol stitching book club project. And if she doesn't do a 2021 Flossmas ornament, I'll just do the 2020. Sorry. Wow. It would be a 2020 Flossmas ornament. We aren't in 2021 yet. I would do the 2019 ornament if she doesn't come out with a 2021, a 2020 ornament. I, wow. Okay. Anyway, I hope you guys weren't hoping for a quality video. <laughs> um, so because I plan on doing Flossmas this year, um, I was wanting to do, if you are new to Floss 2, Flossmas, and I can't remember who came up with this originally. I'm 99% sure it was Caroline from Off the Grid, but when I started watching Floss Tube last year, um, so many people are doing did Flossmas videos last year, and I'm pretty sure so many people are doing Flossmas videos this year. And so you do a video like a little short, like when I did on um, the countdown to Halloween. It's sort of like a, a countdown, like a like a holiday Floss Tube celebration where you do a little video every day. 
And a lot of people get advent calendars and they open them every day. I didn't get any advent calendars um, this year. I don't know why I'm kicking myself now. I really wish I had. And then I was like, well, what am I gonna show on a Flossmas video every single day? Um, and then I was like, well, maybe instead of showing things I'm getting, I could give some things. So I have these little cards, these little prairie schooler charts, and they're super little. They're, what is the stitch count on these? They're like 30 by 50 or 30, they're teeny tiny. I don't have my reading glasses on. They don't say the stitch count anyway. One, two, three, four. One, two. They're like 40 by 40 or 30 by 40. They're super teeny. Um, I have a bunch of them. They're not all Christmas. Some of them are Halloween. Some of them are spring. Um, but I have 23 of them. And my plan is I'm going to start doing daily videos on December 1st. And I will give a little card away every single day for 23 days. I don't, I won't give one away on the 24th fourth because um I'll just announce the 23rd on the 24th anyway it'll make sense anyway I have 23 to give away and then I'm thinking wow that's going to be 23 people I have to track down every day to get their addresses so here's the thing I'm not giving these away today they will start December 1st will be the first giveaway um I'm super excited about this so I'm going to have a Google form for you to fill out to give me your address. So I'll have it linked in the description box starting today and you can pre-fill it out um, or you can wait for Flossmas to pre-fill it out. But in order to win one of these cards starting December 1st, you have to have that filled out. If when I pick a person and if, they don't have it filled out, I'm gonna pick the next person because the holidays are too crazy a time to be tracking people down for their addresses. Um, anyway, I'm crazy excited about this. Like after we finish filming this, all of my fall stuff is coming down, all of the holiday stuff is going up. Um, and I'm just, I'm so excited. I think it'll just be such a nice way to stay connected with you all and to kind of fill up my time during this holiday season. That's a little bit weird and different from normal. Um, and hopefully a, a way for you guys to have something to maybe make make your holiday season a little a little brighter. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. <sighs> So yeah, don't forget to fill out the Google form um, in the description box if you want to participate in that giveaway starting in Tuesday. Starting on Tuesday, holy smokes. Um, yeah, and I will talk about the details on how that will all work on Tuesday, but just know that you will have to have your contact information in my Google form. Um, speaking of giveaways, I gave away a chart. I did a little pass the stash in our last video and it was for Winter Peace by Sisters and Best Friends. And I had 21 people ask for it and it goes to Sue Trask. Yay, Sue, so Sue. You can fill out that Google form if you want to, but since that was not a prerequisite for winning that past the stash, you can reach out to me also through my email, which is in the description box, or you can direct message me on Instagram, which is honestly the fastest way to get to me if you ever need to reach out to me. Um, or you can have the Google form filled out. I will check that as well. Um, so yay, Sue Trask, that's exciting. Also in the video, two videos below i gave i passed the stash on wine a little by sue hillis and that went to tina from bees and tea stitching so tina you have not reached out to me yet with your address um don't forget to do that so okay and then i already did all my floss tube shout outs um <laughs> interspersed throughout the whole video so i don't have to do that um and that's it i think we're done um this may be my longest video. I apologize for that. I had a lot to say. 
It was a little windy and a little bit spacey, but that's okay, because that's who I am. Um, I had a wonderful birthday, and I wanted to thank you all again for the warm wishes and the stitch along participation. And um, yeah, I can't say that enough. It really made my birthday this year. And that's it. That's it for me. Um, I will see you all on Tuesday. I'm so excited. I'm so excited for Flossmas. Um, So stay well, get a lot of stitching done, and um, I'll see you guys in a few days. Bye.